hi, it's Susan again, and I told you that I was gonna be doing some kind of a different video with my girlfriend, Vicki, and we're gonna do a little bit of everything, I guess, her wonderful cooking lessons that she does, and she's gonna be making a cauliflower pizza crust for all of you to, in case any of you are interested and have never tried it, it's really, really good. I never would have believed it. Now, I've never watched her make it, so I'm not sure how much fat she puts in it, but we're gonna show you, so here we go. So we've got a lot of things on the go. We're gonna, she's gonna do the pizza crust, and I'm gonna do some Christmas cookies with my famous Toblerone chocolates. And at the end, I'm gonna show you, hi. And by the way, we're called Mamas in Pajamas. Yeah. That's our new name. That's so every time we do a video, we're gonna have our pajamas on. And we'll be drinking wine. Yeah, wine. Yeah, Where'd you get your pajamas? Mine are from Walmart in the States. Walmart, yeah. Mine are from uh, TJ Maxx. Oh, and the other thing that we're gonna do is we've got everything mixed up here with the cheese and the Christmas decorations. But that's real life, right? So she's got a friend that's not well, and we're gonna make her a Christmas um, a flower arrangement after with some roses and sort of like those floor, you know, those pretty boxes that people get delivered to themselves. They're like square around and then they have the short roses in them. So we're going to do a, a real one. I did a fake one last time for you, so now a real one. Anyway, and we buy the roses at Costco because they're a good price there. They're really good quality roses. They really are. They're really good value. They didn't have the color I wanted, but I went with red. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. And I think she's going to love it regardless. Anyways, so today we're going to make, um, I guess it would be a vegetarian pizza crust. Um, it's really fantastic, and if you follow it to a T, I think you're going to have really good results. Um, the key thing to remember is that you need to have the parchment paper. I tried making it um, on, with aluminum foil, and it, it just did not turn out well. So if you don't have parchment paper and you can't get out to get it, just hold off until you do get the parchment paper. It really um, helps in the cooking the way it cooks really and then taking it off of the um pan or the baking not the pan the baking what do you call that a cookie cookie tray or the baking so all you need for this recipe is um cauliflower uncooked cauliflower just buy a head of fresh cauliflower not frozen frozen um when you thaw it out it has too much water in it and you want this crust to be as dry as possible so i just bought a head of cauliflower and I've created part of it. I've started it ahead of time so we don't have to be waiting and watching it cook. Um, so basically what you do is you just wash your florets and you get a cheese grater, any kind of cheese grater will do, and um, you just grate the florets. So you want around two and a quarter to two and a half cups of grated cauliflower. Okay, so it's really simple to do. Make sure you don't get any of the stem kind of bitter and a little, I don't think you want it. If you get a bit in, don't worry about it. So just do that. I like to clean up while I go. So just put that in here like this. I'm just gonna get my, Sue, can you get the frying pan for me if you don't mind? Thank you. So what you do with the cauliflower, once you get around two and a half cups of grated cauliflower, you put it in your skillet or your frying pan with no oil and you just cook it on medium heat for around 15 minutes. You don't want the color of the cauliflower really to brown. Your intention is not to cook the cauliflower. The intention is to just get the moisture out of the cauliflower. Some recipes call for boiling the cauliflower and then putting it in a cheesecloth or cloth and taking out the excess moisture, but I find that this one works best. So you can go ahead and put You want it less work. Yeah, you want less work. You can put it on the stove on medium soup and continue stirring it. I have yeah, that I one. I don't know. Really oh, okay. Oven. So I'm just going to turn it on. I don't have this kind of oven. Yeah, that's a gas stove. No problem. So we're just going to Chino. put it on medium. It's going to sizzle a bit, and that's when you start to hear the um, moisture coming out of the cauliflower. So just keep stirring it. Leave it for a couple minutes. Give it a stir. Just keep your eye on it so it doesn't burn. In the meantime, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, get one egg, one large egg. Okay, and Sue, would you mind giving me a fork? Sue's my assistant. It's funny, isn't it, how we all have talents, like finding what's your purpose, mm -hmm. you know? And it's really, when you think of it, it's, it's really a complex question. What is my purpose? Is my purpose being a mom? 
Is my purpose being a friend? Well, we're all we're all moms and friends. We all we all kind of have that in common, and, and that's what I really realized that we have more in common with each other than than less common things mm -hmm. because we're all human beings and we, we kind of all go through the same things. But you know, I've been trying to think what my calling is, and yours is probably different than mine, but. It, I think it's important to try to figure out what is your calling or what are you good at. And I think one thing that I am good at is cooking. And um, I've always been good at cooking. Because as a kid, I never cooked at all. And when I got married at 23, you know, I started whipping up these dishes and I realized not only do I love cooking, but I'm really good at it. And it's just something that's maybe in me and I never knew I had it. So. Um, well, look at all the good cooks out there and the yeah. chefs. They love it. Yeah. And it just comes natural to them and they can just whip things together, whereas I hate it. Right. But it's interesting because Sue is, I think, for my friends that I have, the most talented friend um, that I know. And everything she does is so beautiful. I, I, and for me, I would think that your talent is um, really like fashion and I think home decor. and. It's, it's so hard and frustrating at times because you know what your talent is, but you don't know how to move forward with it and um, maybe perhaps make it a career. So it's interesting. I, I know. I, it's almost like you've got to know the right people. You, you really be, do. you got to be at the right place at the right time. Somebody has to notice you because, I mean, we, I've tried so many businesses and really pushed it, and then I lose interest because it's very costly. And I think you get and discouraged. I'm discouraged, right? And that's the People pity. say, oh, you're so great at it, but like, I'm not making any money at it. Exactly. I mean, cooking for me, of course, we've got to cook my family, but it's just really something that comes natural for me, and I think the decorating is natural for you. Yeah. And I mean, whenever I need a decorating tip or um, a fashion tip, I ask Sue. Something um, with the way you put it together that I really enjoy. So I think just, you know what, start using your gifts and really just be proud of yourself because you never know where it's going to lead you. Anyhow, so I've put one cup of fresh part We're going to be cheese. rambling a lot. Yeah, we it's ramble really a lot and we go off topic, so just bear with us. Yeah. So this actually is a shredded Parmesan cheese. You could buy your own Parmesan cheese, a brick, and shred it. But this, they, you know, it's so convenient now. So um, one cup, and I'm just going to add a half more. I like it really cheesy. And it should be a nice hard cheese. You can you could use Asiago cheese as well, um, but any hard cheese. So we've got a cup and a half in here and one beaten egg. I'm just going to mix this together. Really, re this is really a simple recipe, and it's so delicious. You're, I think you're going to freak out actually when you try it. How's that cauliflower coming, Sue? Yeah, it looks like it's drying up. So after 15 minutes, once all the moisture is taken out of the cauliflower, let it cool. And then you're just going to add it into this mixture. So we'll let it. We're going to continue cooking, mm -hmm. and we are going to move on to, um, I guess, making the pizza crust. It's ready to go in. I'm just going to dump it in. I'm just going to. So it's like three ingredients. It's three ingredients. It's egg, one egg beaten up, a cup and a half of Parmesan cheese or Asiago cheese. Um, around two and a half cups of grated cauliflower and then you know what you can leave it like this don't add any salt because the Parmesan cheese is salty I like to I mean you can add really whatever you want but I just would suggest no salt I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic powder in I just I'm not one for recipes in terms of being specific when cooking I just kind of go with what I feel I like yeah. if I like something, if I like garlic. The egg is what's binding the... Yeah, the, the cheese and the egg is what's binding it. So just give it a good mix. And you know, it's funny, when I was younger, I didn't learn... My mother didn't teach me to cook either because she didn't want me in the kitchen. So I really didn't know how to do anything. Until I got married and I was like 18 and a half. And then I started to burn things. And then I slowly learned how to cook, you know, different recipes from friends. And people actually thought I was a good cook. <laughs> Not anymore, because now I, I'm eating on a diet all my life. It's like, ugh, what do I make now? But I think you're a good cook. I think, I think if, when your heart's not in it, mm -hmm. you just, at our age, you just kind of, you lose your passion. And, well, and because she's you still have young girls. Person. You have young girls in your house. I have boys that are older, and they, one of them's always on a plan of diet, and he makes his own. And the other one, uh, he eats what he wants as well. Sometimes, like, twice a week, I'll cook something, and he'll eat it. You know what, I think I lost interest when, you know, sometimes kids, they don't want to eat what you make. So yeah, you I'm get like, discouraged. Okay, you figure, what's okay, the point? Like, nobody wants this, so why do I bother? I agree. It's just going to rot the bread. I agree. So what I've done is I um I use baking stones. I use the pamper chest of baking stones. I actually 
cannot live without them. They are the most incredible stones for baking, for cooking, baking especially. Young moms who are making chicken strips and french fries for their kids. They're just unbelievable because I'm not sure what, I think it's the stone itself. Um, yeah, it's the cooking property and it really, it, they're, it's really fantastic for chicken strips and fries. You know sometimes you cook chicken strips and then, or fish sticks and then you leave them for 10 minutes and they get hard. Everything on the stone comes out really juicy and tender and never burnt. Well, of course, unless, unless you leave it in the oven too long. So I, I've got my baking stone and I've put, I've lined it with parchment paper. Again, remember that's the most important mm -hmm. stage. So just form a little ball and then you just start working with your mixture. And it, this doesn't make a huge pizza. It would be, I think, adequate for, well, it depends what you eat, I guess. Two people. Um, two people for sure. A guy maybe could eat it himself. The crust is really delicious. It's I don't really know how to describe it. It's kind of, it's obviously cheesy. It, the texture is not quite like a pizza dough because there's not any flour in it. But if you let it sit for around 20 minutes before you cut into it, it's just really you delicious. Like, it's almost like a potato pancake. Yes. That kind of texture. Yeah. yeah. I think that must be from the cheese. Anyways, keep working your dough till it's, not your dough, your mixture till it's around a quarter of an inch um, thick. And then you just kind of want to build up your sides a little bit so it doesn't burn. Hold on, let me show them. Because yeah, it's hard to see sometimes. So just keep working your dough, your mixture rather. Set the preheat your oven to 400. And you're gonna cook it 400 for 20 minutes. Exactly 20 minutes, take it out, it'll be ready. So I'm just working around it and building up the edges. So what I've done recently is um, I've started uh, the keto diet and this is actually a perfect recipe for keto because it's high in fat, it's got the cheese in it, but it has um, no, no carbs. Like so no gluten, right? No, the, no. no dairy, no gluten, so it's fantastic. Well, it's got dairy in the oh, Excuse me, not dairy, sorry. I, did, I, meant, um, I meant no sugar and no, um, it's got no carb really other than the cauliflower. Yeah, but that's a good carb. Yeah. And you could make this, I'm not sure how it would work with vegan cheese, as long as it's a hard cheese and it sets up nicely, it might work. Yeah, but does vegan cheese melt? It does. Yeah, it does. That it does. We bought that the Dia, the Dia cheese is really lovely. I like that. Mm. Mm. It stinks. <laughs> it is kind of a stinky cheese. My daughter last year, she's a vegan and she lives downtown, and um, she brought me the most unbelievable cheeses you cannot imagine they were vegan cheeses her girlfriend was making them and unfortunately she stopped so i was so disappointed i mean the store-bought cheeses are nice but nothing like that anyways there you go so you can see it here and i'm just going to wash my hands and pop that in the oven uh, at 400. is it on yep the oven's on so i'm going to set your timer make these Toblerone cookies and I call them snow toes. I kind of made them up. They were from, they started from a sugar cookie recipe and then I started, you know, doing different varieties of cookies. And what you do is you just make a sugar cookie and then recipe and then you roll them in balls and then you put a piece of Toblerone in the middle and bake it. And everybody loves it. You put a little icing sugar. They're on. really beautiful. So, so simple, but everybody's like, where'd you do this? How'd you do this? Where'd you buy these? Anyway, they're really they're really nice chewy cookie, not too um, sweet, but the chocolate gives it a really nice depth uh, and a really good flavor. The Toblerone is really yeah. a quality chocolate, European, of course, we're both European. But uh, it's funny as well because I hate baking, but I love cooking. Mm -hmm. Baking to me is like really you've got to be really like precise in your measurement. Where I'm more creative with my cooking. Yeah, so in baking you can't be creative. No, well, not you really. can, but not, not with really. the ingredients. You can no. do variations. So but not what really. I did was I put. I'm doubling the recipe, so I put, it's, it calls for half a cup of butter, but I put a whole cup. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just do that. I'm going to start, or you know what, you could do this for me. Sure. You can cut these um, Toblerone. Okay, now I buy the big Toblerone, the big bar. It is a little bit difficult to cut, so Vicky's bought the small one. So, okay, so if you cut them like this, actually this is perfect to put in one cookie. That's insane. So That's it's even better than cutting the big bar. So. These might be more expensive though. 
Um, I think they were two ninety nine. My daughter bought them. Two ninety nine a bar. Three six nine twelve. I think it's fifteen dollars opposed to but you're two making big all, bars. You're making a lot of batches, and think about it. They're more of a gourmet tasting cookie, so it, I mean. And they look really pretty too. Fifteen dollars for dozens and dozens of cookies. <clears throat> Thanks, Sue. Thanks for making these because. Um, Good for her daughter. She's yeah, my daughter's uh, going to be bringing these to her new fiance's family house for Christmas. My yeah. recipe, because I my brain is like dementia, I think, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I make this all the time. I still forget. Okay, so the sugar, we're going to put, it says three quarters of a cup. I'm going to double it, so it's one and a half cups of sugar. Oh, so you need a uh, yeah. cup? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Could you just use a half? Mm -hmm. I think yeah, I can, yeah, that's that right. Okay? Yeah, because uh, if I need one and a half, then yeah, I'll just so use do. three of these. That's, oh, good math. Oh, 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 good yeah. job, Sue. See, we still got it. Oh, I'm, we got I'm our math good skills. at math. I can do things on the top of my head because, you know, I shop so much. So I have to. I always have to think about the, the discounts, the, the exchange, you know, all that stuff. I'm good at it. You know what's funny now? Nowadays, it's, you know, I feel so weird saying this, but I never mm -hmm. thought in a million years I would ever say when I was young or when we were young. <laughs> It just seems like times have changed so much from when we were growing up, but um, I find nowadays a lot of the kids really don't have the math skills. I mean, a lot do. They I don't do. want to put anybody down. If you do, it's wonderful, but I, I find a lot of kids don't. Because, it's because computer, they, everything's on the, yeah, everything's with the computer, they have calculators. Never mind, somebody yesterday was talking about that it was $30 and they owed her a quarter. No, they owed her $10. Like it was, it, they gave her thirty dollars, but it was twenty dollars, right? And it was ten dollars back. Right. She had to use her calculator. She didn't know. Yeah, my niece does too. A lot of people have really a hard time because they don't with giving back change. But you know, you want to know something else that kids, I think, are or, or they're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think in school there needs to be like a life lesson class, yeah, um, a kindness class, um, respect class. I know it stems from the home, but sometimes these kids just try to act out, they want to show off in class and be silly and uh, I don't know, I just think kindness really goes a long way. But anyways, writing checks. I think a lot of people do not know how to write a check. Oh well, we don't even use that. We don't even use it that often, do we? But I think okay. it's important to and still it use it. it costs for it. one egg. Okay. And so there's two eggs. Good. One plus one is two. Yeah, that's right. You know, my mother would never drop an egg in anything. She has to put it in a cup oh. and then look at, at it to make sure there's no, no like, you know, Shell. pieces of blood or whatever. Of course. Ooh, the worst thing is That's when you open it. an egg and there's blood in it. Oh, it dis disappoints me. It really feel bad for upsets me. So do I. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> if we talked about everything, every ingredient we use, sometimes maybe we'd be a bit discouraged and second guess ourselves. Sure, eggs and milk, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just sort of cream those together. I get muscles doing this. It's like, oh my god. Anyway, of course I've got okay. a, I've got a KitchenAid, of course, but I never use. Me too. It's mine's, mine's in the basement. Oh my god. Do you want a measuring? Do you want the measuring? Yeah, a teaspoon thing. Or you could just wing that, couldn't you? What is this? If you, if you wanted to, where's your Mexico? Where's your yeah. Cuban vanilla? This one is, this one's from Mexico. Oh, okay. that's a good one. Okay. So if this, you wanted to, Sue, could you um, could you add cinnamon to this recipe or any flavoring into the dough? I'm sure, whatever you like, but I never do. But I don't know if you'd even taste it. Half a teaspoon of vanilla, so I'm going to use two of these suckers. And I don't do it over the bowl just in case too much falls in. So this is pure vanilla. I like to use the pure vanilla. I don't like imitation. Like extract. Oh, I just, I cannot stand the taste of that. Do you know what my mom used to do all the time? She used to buy these little, little tiny vials of Dr. Utker, and they were flavors oh, like vanilla, oh, almond. Right. They were pure. Oh wow! I think you can still buy liquid, them. liquid form. Yeah, you can still buy them in the European stores. Okay. Okay, so now milk. Milk. So you're ready for your Christmas suit? You've got all your Christmas shopping done? Nope. No. My God, I'm usually like the so organized when it comes to Christmas shopping. I usually start in the fall. Um, had a been having a kind of a hard couple months. Um, my mother's not well right now, so I just number one have, haven't really been in the mood to go shopping. Okay, and you're uh, preoccupied, right? Really preoccupied going back and forth to the hospital, but um, I'm almost there. I just have a couple more gifts. Um, I really want to switch it up next year though, and 
really trying to do something different. Um, what I'm in there and I put, it says half a tablespoon, I put one tablespoon. Okay, now these are the wet. So now you're just gonna put the three dry ingredients. They say to put it in a separate bowl, I never do. Oh really? And that's mess, okay. like it still looks great. Okay, so I'm gonna use one and a quarter cups of flour. So I'm gonna use, actually I use three. three. I double it plus a little bit more. So. Here, I've got some flour in my canister. You can use this one up first if you don't mind. Got my gorgeous canisters that you bought me for Christmas a few years ago. Quite a few years ago. Gosh, I had these at the old other house, so they're pretty old. Mm. Still my favorite, though. Mm. I'm just I'm try not to buy so much for the house anymore. It's a salt, so I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, why? Because the, but the butter salted? Okay, now it's this quarter teaspoon baking soda. Okay, that I can do. Okay. Sorry. Quarter teaspoon, so half a teaspoon again. Okay. Uh, what, how much baking soda? Half a teaspoon. So you're putting... Uh, one teaspoon to double it. Are you doubling it? No, it's, it's this is quarter teaspoon, so I oh, half a teaspoon. Oh, sorry. So you, yeah. Thanks. So you just stir that up and your dog wants in. Oh my God. They're just relentless, those two. Oh, it's such an easy dough to make. Mm -hmm. It's a soft batter. Mm -hmm. Do you have to put that in the fridge? No. Really? Oh. It's actually softer than usual. <laughs> Okay, maybe Did we put too much butter? No. I, know, um, I sometimes add more flour when it's yeah. Because you, yeah, because you want it to be, you know, good consistency to roll the ball. Yeah. So I'm gonna just put a little bit more in. When you roll these out, mm -hmm. you need more flour because they stick to the counter. Are you looking forward to New Year, Sue? Or to the New Year? I think we've talked about that. We're hoping for a lot of good things in the New Year. A lot of good things for our moms. Both our moms are elderly and we really want good health for them and a good peace of mind, I think, as well. And for ourselves, we just, uh, what do we want for ourselves, Sue? I think for me, I really want to, I want, Peace and quiet. Yeah, I really want positivity. I, I love to be positive. Sometimes I do get down and then I just keep remembering, you know, you are in control of your thoughts and, you know, can't change what other people do or what they say towards us or how they act, but we really can change the way we receive Good health. I think that's the most important oh God, thing. This dough is really sticky to Let's it. see. It's really not at all like what it usually is. It looks is. really nice though. No, but I usually, did I do something wrong? I put three cups. Oh, <gasps> this isn't a cup. This right. is half a cup. Right. Oh. That's why. Okay. Oh my goodness. Just ignore what I've done. I'm just oh, going to add more so, Oh my goodness, you're so cute. I thought it was a... So that's okay. You keep kneading it in. Yeah, it's okay. But anyway, it's, it's three cups when you double it. See, this is when you when you double things and you don't have the right measurements. How we just keep on striving for the money and working for the money and, you know, our bodies are tired. We don't listen to our bodies. We go to work. Sometimes we're hungry or we're I agitated. And you know what? At the end of the day, when you really realize it, you know, seeing my mother sick at 83, it's just been such an eye opener. And we need to slow down and nothing matters but your health. If you don't have your health, you can't even enjoy the money or vacation properties or well, you can't your go to kids work. or food. You can't go to work I, to make the money. Right? Yeah, I just think we need to slow down, really focus on what matters. I think people who really know your heart and know you and know your intention will understand. And those are the type of people you want to surround yourself with. Okay, so this is good now. There we go. This is good even though it's a bit mishmash with the dough. So do I need to get a cooking sheet? And do I need to line it with a parchment? Yes, please. Okay. So should we use a like a, just a regular baking sheet or should I use my stones? No, just a regular, regular? baking sheet. Regular. So you're going to just make a little ball. Okay. So And should I line it with baking a parchment paper? Yes. Parchment paper like a is really ball. unbelievable. It really changes the cooking property. And I'm going to flatten it. And then I'm going to put one of the provolone sections on on top and then fold it over the way. So it looks like that. Let me see. Show me. Oh, oh, it's almost like a little, like a yeah. turnover. Well, yeah. Like Pillsbury a turnover. turnover. Pillsbury turnover. Or like, you know, like a... So those are super easy. Is Did you taste the dough? Is it... I don't taste it. We put sugar in it? Yeah. Good. It. Oh, good. So, um, maybe you could do this, but that would be easier. 
I just lay them down on an angle so there's no room. Okay, so this is the crust. And it's all baked, so she's going to let it cool a little bit and then add the, the toppings. So there's one tray ready to go into the oven. Whoa, it slipped. So that's what they look like. And uh, here you go. And tell them what just happened. Oh God, Vicky took her pizza crust out and she took it out of the oven and put it on, the, on her stove element and it was on. And I don't know what happened, but she has a pampered chef and it burst into a million pieces all over the floor. Thank God she had taken the crust off already. So now she has to buy another one. And they're not cheap, those things, right? They're no. Like 60 How long does it do these cookies have to bake? Eight to ten minutes. So should I put the timer on? Yeah. Yeah, it's on. Okay, so now I'm just going to, for the topping for the pizza, you can make homemade pizza sauce. Oh, well, that's always the best, really. Sorry. But, I mean, you know what? They make a lot of, you can get a lot of good ones at the store. This is just craft pizza sauce. So I'm just going to put it on the pizza. You know what, you can eat it just like this, to be honest with you. If you just want, like, a new of bread, it really looks like a giant potato letka. Put your sauce all the way to the edges. You want to really prevent it from browning. That's my dog, Daisy. She's, like, <laughs> acting crazy. I'm going to get some mozzarella cheese out of the fridge. You can use whatever cheese you like. I'm just going to do pizza mozzarella. I've got a little bit of uh, Mexican stuff, cheese as well. So what I like to do is after you put your sauce on, just put a bit of cheese. You don't want to smother this pizza with heavy toppings. Just make it really nice and light. I've got some sliced onions. Uh, they're really thin. I'm just going to add that to the pizza. I'm going to put some ham. I'm going to cut a little piece of ham. This is just like. Oh, I thought that was prosciutto. This it's it is it's some Not kind of fancy. It was no, it's really nice ham though. More Get out. Just gonna I'm chop that. Out you can just chop it up or do you know if you like it big, small pieces, however you like it. I'll get one more piece. I bought this for my quiche that I'm going to be making Christmas Eve. Just chop that up nicely. Give it a rough chop. Put a bit, bit of that. You know, I was going to put some green pepper or red pepper, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to. And I've got a little bit of oregano, fresh oregano. And I'm just going to add that. You know what? I love basil. I love basil. Fresh oregano, cheese, um, some ham, and it's going to go in the oven um, for 10 more minutes. You can lower the heat. You can even put now, it on 325. Can you bake it in that size? Yeah. The, cau the, ca the cauliflower crust? Yeah. So because you broke your oven. I broke reasons. my Cookies are done. That's going to go in the oven. I'm going to cook it on 350 for another eight minutes, just until the cheese melt. Keep it, um, take it out, let it cool for 20 minutes, and then give it a cut. A good wash. So look at this is the crazy animal that's outside that wants to keep on going in and out, in that's and out. Lovely. Cookies came out. And they're just a little bit overdone, but it's still okay because this oven's different than mine, and this is a convection oven but they're still great. So now we're gonna let them cool and then just uh, put a little bit of icing sugar on top. Okay, Miss Oh my Vicky. God, so when Sue and I get together, just beware and get ready for it because we're like a slip shot side show. We should have our own TV show calling it, I don't know what, like- Vicky and Sue, like something, Lucy Methel. Something crazy. Yeah. Like two. I think all of us with each other. Are so like, she decides to take the icing oh sugar out. We just about powdered the cookies and she realized it was cornstarch. Thank God that. Well, do you have icing sugar? Of course I do, since I'm such a great baker. Okay, let me find it. Oh my God. Yes, here it is. Good old icing sugar. Keep it in the bag that you. Oh buy. my goodness! How lucky is that that I tried it? Yeah. What made me try it? I have no idea. We're gonna get my fancy. Uh, what do you call that? Sifter. Oh, like snow. Yeah, that's why they call snow toads. Oh, that's so cute, Sue. Thank you. You're so sweet to so share with us. You guys are a little bit overbaked. You put the white sugar, <laughs> you won't notice it because it lightens it, right? This is why I hate baking. I feel well, like cooking only... sometimes you can be, it's a little bit more forgiving. Baking is like the right baking time. Oh, it won't even like no. certain things like, you know, won't rise or even breads and things. I'm not a good bread maker. No, I'm not. 
I tried really, it once. I don't really cook with yeast. I tried it once or twice and I made some kind of rye bread and the next day it was all green fungus. Guess we'll move on to our craft now that you're going to help me do. Oh, God, they're so good. So the next batch she turned wow, the convection part Wow, Sue, off. these are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're so simple, right? Thank you. Once I tried them with the peanut butter cup in the middle, but that melted so much, it just oozed out. It tasted good too, but this is a more substantial chocolate, like a firmer, harder, because it's got nuts or crushed nuts in it, right? And I think like a nougat or something to total yeah, embark. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm just going to critique them right now. Mm -hmm to try to describe them. Soft, a chewy, not overly sweet, but they just have a really nice texture to them. That's why I love them. You could roll these in cinnamon sugar. You could add cinnamon sugar to the top. Yeah. Really nice. And I like how thick they are. So the pizza's ready. I left it in the oven for around eight minutes. Just You just want the toppings to um, to uh, melt. So because of the parchment paper, it makes it so easy to just slide off. And there you go. There's your pizza. No carbs. <coughs> Cauliflower, delicious. Give it to your kids. They won't even know the difference. Probably love it. it. Looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. So, you know, again, it's not the biggest pizza, but it's really filling. If you've got a gluten intolerance or your, what is the other one, celiac? Can you eat that? You could eat that if you're celiac because it has no car uh, celiacs can't have the gluten. Right. So because there's no wheat in it, again, three ingredients. What about cheese? Do they have a special no. protocol? No, no, if you're lactose and broccoli. Oh. Wondering how broccoli would be. Mm. Probably really tasty with the cheese. Like a broccoli. Let's I'm gonna try it. Try it. I'll try and see how it goes. Maybe you something. If there yeah, you never know. If there's anything you guys want to see, any recipes that you're interested in trying, or if you have any questions. Or if there's something you'd like to see me make with Sue or any craft. Sue's amazing at any craft, any home decor idea. I can tie a bow around anything, even your husband. Yeah. Hey, they might not like that. You wouldn't do that, you big flirt. <laughs> yeah. That's Sue's been gracious enough to help me uh, make a flower arrangement for my girlfriend who is not well right now. So Sue is gonna help me. So what we're gonna do is we are going to make um, a rose arrangement. And we're gonna start off by adding the oasis. So then just put two of them that have been soaked in there. And then I have, so the flowers have. So then it's all basically. What I'm gonna do is cut each rose. Yeah, kind of longer, because we might have to poke them in. You, you, you explain. I'm take all the leaves off the bottom. I'm just gonna cut them all at the beginning. Because you know what? I didn't buy any um, it's okay, baby. baby's breath. It's okay. I don't even put baby's breath. I don't want the baby's breath. Sometimes I just um, use leaves as fillers, and we're gonna maybe if you have some Christmas balls, I do. then I can. Ow! I do, Sue. You can have any balls you want. Remember the time I told you I worked in a flower shop for a day? I quit. <clears throat> and they put me in the freezer. Oh, they put me in the freezer. I would hate that. Like, and then. Do thorning roses, no oh. gloves on. I go, I don't like this. I'm a designer, not a oh. plucker of thorns. But so tomorrow's Friday, my mother's coming from Kelowna, and she's going to spend the holidays with us and her birthday, her 93rd birthday. Oh. And I'm going to liquor store. Yeah. <laughs> and tomorrow, my mother has her third chemo session. At Sunnybrook. Um, you know what? She's been doing fantastic with it, and we really can't say enough about Sunnybrook. These are beautiful roses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to start placing the flowers in. I'm going to cut them just a bit shorter. Okay, so I'm just going to go around with the perimeter of it and stick them in so you don't see, you push them all the way in so that you don't see the bottom of the roses. And how many? How many come in that? 12? 24, 12, rather. 24 roses. It does, and, and they're gorgeous. Sometimes, well. sometimes it's not enough for big containers, so we, we can add fillers after. Okay. Like leaves and things, you know, bowls. So now you've got your base of flowers, because we only bought like two dozen that came in the package, so the container's bigger than, than the other, so you're going to have some space left in between. So we're just going to add some filler, like some leaves. And it came with some leaves, so. What we're going to do is cut the leaves apart into small 
into small stems if you can. Let's see, these are big leaves, huh? Okay, so we'll make them smaller. See, that's where you're so good, you've got a good eye. But I don't know if these leaves are gonna be good, but we can push them way down so they just peek up a little, peep, peek up, <laughs> peek up. Well, you'll fiddle with that and see how it is. Because I usually don't do this. I usually just put um, more roses, but we're gonna put some balls in it. So to put the balls in, we're gonna put a little bit of a, an old Christmas tree hook and bend it, or you can just use wire, right? And we're gonna make a cluster because then it fills up the gaps better. As you can see, it's, you're able to move it around and we're gonna cut it. And it slices just like a regular pizza. I guess okay. even easier, right? Yeah, it's really good. And again, you don't even have to put the toppings on it. You could just eat it like that, or you could put a little bit of cheese. Here, do you want a little plate? I don't need a plate. Are you sure? Let's just see how it is. Mm. How is it? How do you like it? Very good. You could put some hot sauce. That's really great. Wow, you guys got to try this recipe. It is friggin' fantastic. It's it's shocking. It's so good. It tastes like real pizza. Like the crust, you wouldn't even know. The texture. It actually does. It, it really emulates real pizza dough. So I hope you like this video. And mm -hmm. tell us if you want to see more cooking shows. We're talking with our mouthful here. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That wraps up the day. Talk to you later. Bye Happy now. holidays. Merry mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm.